The pooper is fresh. Yay. You know what he told me? What? So apparently another customer. Did he ask if we had company this weekend? No, he asked what we feed our guests. No, uh, actually, he's a previous customer. Apparently we're throwing entire rolls of toilet paper in the toilet, which is like a problem because they can't pump them, yeah, right? Yeah, that doesn't shock me at all. So today he's like, man, it's not, not pumping. And he like looks in there, there's a bunch of rocks in really? there. So they're apparently throwing rocks. I said, you know, that just brings to my mind, I'll bet you find some really interesting things in toilets. And he said, oh, you bet. He said, I found some really nice phones. <laughs> I'm like thinking, do I want this smartphone? Exactly. Nah, toss it. <laughs> I bet he finds great. Said he finds safety glasses, oh, never yeah. has found any money. And I was thinking, gosh, that's a real hard decision about whether you want that 20 bucks or not. Do we get to work on the house today? Yes. We've actually spent the past probably hour or two looking over our plans. All in all, I think we're doing pretty well. It's going we, good. We found a couple panels that weren't the right measurements, but basically our garage panels are too long as we've shared and our insulated header is too long. So we've just kind of been working through that stuff. Plus some other stuff. We'll share all that stuff later, not now. Coming up. You can tell that I already need to go put my sun shirt and sun hat on. Yep. But in the interest of getting this show on the road, I'm going to come out here in my t-shirt. So the goal today is to get these panels ready to rock, get our headers in, and then we're ready for garage doors. The problem with today's plan is that we have to use some new tools and stuff, and we've got to work with new materials and build some things we've never built before. So seemingly it's a fairly small task, kind of like a project we did the other day that was like, this is going to take all day. And then it took two hours mm -hmm. and we're like, well, that wasn't bad. It could but go either way, I think. Normally, two hours turns into a full day project. Yeah. Originally, in our SIP plans, we had SIP panels that ran from uh, across the top here that create the opening for our garage door. We've got an eight foot door here and a 16 foot door here. The problem with that is that the garage door hardware, which is this monstrous spring that helps make the door light so that you can lift it and an opener can open it, it creates a lot of torque. And the panel running across here really not the best for that application. So at the last minute, everyone said, wait a second, that won't work. So we ended up improvising and we're going to build an insulated header that's going to bridge between these two that's super rigid and should handle the torque from the garage door a lot better. These huge pieces of plywood are called LVL or laminated veneer lumber, I think. We actually use these to frame the stair opening in the house. You might recognize this material. What's really cool is you can buy it by the linear foot. So we bought some that I think were 26 feet and we cut them down to nine and 17 and they are stupid rigid. And then we bought this sheet foam, which should create a thermal break to help retain some insulating properties in the garage. Even though the point of SIPs is primarily to get rid of the thermal bridge that happens in a stud wall, without sheet foam insulation, of course there's a lot of other benefits. It feels like on our south wall that we have just a ridiculous amount of lumber. And we do because we have so many openings between the garage door, the French doors, and of course the huge windows that are going in the gable. There's really not that much sip on the south wall. It's mostly doors and windows. So to accommodate and create some structural rigidity there, the engineer has specified tons of lumber. That's good news. The SIP company had specified lumber through the whole entire house. And when I looked at the original plans, I said, what's the difference between this and a stud framed wall? Nothing. So why would I pay all that money for your product with no additional benefits? The engineer though, that we're working with removed all of that lumber. And we went back to the splines that we've been using up until now. Anyway, so we have a lot of lumber to add to the wall with these insulated headers. Everything will be nice and strong. Hopefully it works good.
So we're kind of sorting out a problem that we identified when we threw these panels up. And that is that these garage panels seem to be ever so short when it comes to our sill plate dimensions. So we're kind of measuring our sill plates to see if it was our mistake or something's not the way it should be. If that's level, then our shoe definitely fits. I knew that this sill plate leaned out slightly. I did uh, wedge it on the back side. If you remember way back when I was putting the vertical sill plates on, I actually added a wedge behind it to try to plumb it up. There's still a small gap there. Um, that, no, that's all okay, everything's okay there. The issue that we have is down here. And what we could do there is just add lumber to take up this dimension here, assuming that our garage door opening is actually correct. So when we add the, the framing lumber in here, we could just add additional framing lumber to get us out to flush with this. And then we could just add a small piece of OSB to complete the skin face. We have measured that this door opening is correct at 16 feet, two inches. We're doing that because the door opening needs to be 16 feet and then we're leaving one inch on either side for trim. But the other side over here is not correct. It seems that our opening is a little bit small. Uh, it looks like we actually do need to trim this sill plate back slightly. And if we do that, it'll be okay because if anything, we might just add a small bit of framing lumber to come out and take up whatever small amount is needed to create the correct garage door opening. I think what's challenging for Alyssa and I is that we have a set of plans and we're following those, but it seems like there's the plans and then there's what really happens. And if we just followed the plan, I really don't even know what we would end up with as far as the structure goes. So we're trying to kind of think on our feet, not overthink things, but don't get everything built and look back and go, er, what the heck happened there? All right, we have a plan. We've kind of looked at all the variables here and things are looking better than we originally thought. Way back in the day, I did a lot of these measurements uh, kind of ignoring the foundation because the foundation was not plumb, so it wasn't reliable for measuring from. Good news is everything's good. So we're gonna set up a workstation in the garage because we have one and there's really no point in working out in the sun. And this little short chat that we just had kind of brought to light some issues that we would have had with our insulated headers too. I think we've got those sorted out. Hi water. Behind curtain A, power tools, our newest and perhaps the most awkward tool I've ever purchased, hot knife. So I think what makes this probably the most awkward tool I've ever purchased is I got it from a branding iron place. Like cattle? Yeah, like cattle. That's really weird. Like, look at the L and H branding irons. So the name of this branding iron is Scoop. I was gonna say, if you guys see anybody, cows or otherwise, running around with this brand on them, they belong to us. Oh, so you run it along like that. So this is a depth gauge. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Which you put on here. Oh, cool. And you set this depth with your depth gauge like this. Wow. And then you hot knife and remove the foam. That looks friggin' sweet. I have a hunch it's gonna stink like foam in here. I think the good and the bad thing about a tool like this is that it's a very specialized tool. So it does what it does very, very well, but otherwise it's basically useless. Makes a very terrible screwdriver. So you order these specific to the size of sip that you need. Oh. So guess what we don't have? One for the roof. Oh God. Because this is an eight inch. But in theory, we won't need one in theory. I hope we don't, and if we do, we'll figure it out. I'll just make a wider one of these. Well, totally, yeah, you just run it back and forth a couple yeah, times. Yeah, we'll just have to figure it out. But So if you were gonna do a six inch, eight inch, and a 12 inch sip in the same house, you'd need three of these things. So I guess if you're gonna buy one, buy the six inch, and then just make a wider guide or something so you can, you get the idea. In the last video, if you didn't see that one, I introduced my new experiment. We're gonna make some rum raisin ice cream. Our raisins have been soaking in rum for 24 hours now. Oof. And it smells amazing. Is it better? Oh it yeah, smelled it smells like booze yesterday. It doesn't smell like booze, it smells more like raisins. It does smell like raisins. Oh, that's the rum raisin smell. 
Yeah, it's gonna taste like, like straight up rum. Potent? Not really. Really? Tastes like a really good raisin. What the heck? That's dangerous. Where'd the alcohol go? I think we're onto something. This is gonna be good. It's gonna work. Keep soaking, my littles. Mm, Keep soaking. Precious. First panel, we measured from the sill plate to the sill plate on the bottom, 10 and one half inch. I'm pretty sure we wanna take the dimension from the top because we have wire chases that are on the bottom and those are set to ADA heights. So the standard outlet height is actually 16 inches and the standard switch plate height is 40, 48 inches. So actually, the chase heights are correct. So if we take it off the bottom, it's gonna move our, our switches and our outlets down. So it's coming off the top. Yeah, so ironically, the excess height actually is on the top. It's on. It's on. Oh, that would hurt so bad to have on your skin. Whoa. Oh my gosh, golly. That's freaking sweet. Whoa, that's oh, so cool. It smells terrible. Wow. Oh, that does smell bad. It's still like sizzling and popping. Is it hot? Nope. Yeah. Whoa. Like butter. Are you just test fitting? Yeah, look at that. Wow. Right on the money. The smell lingers, doesn't it? Oh, oh yes. are you good with the cord? It smells amazing. Wow, that looks so perfect. Bazango. Good. It's good. Buzzango. Time for the flip a Tony. You know, this makes me miss. I can't even imagine what you're about to say. Hot glue guns. Oh, uh, didn't you do arts and crafts Whew. as a kid? Dang. Looking good. Oh dang. Is it flush? It's hot. Oh, it's hot. All right, next, I think we should cut the lumber and get that installed on these panels. Then we're ready to screw and glue. So the way this is gonna work is we actually have three inches of lumber on each side of this piece. And the reason for that is we have um, the, the beam that's gonna go on this side. This side's actually gonna be a man door. So we have what's called a cripple stud or a jack stud. Don't hold me to that language. But the point of that stud is to support the beam that goes up here. So an inch and a half of this is called a king stud that goes from the sill all the way up to the top plate, which will sit in this groove. And then the other one gets held off slightly right here where the beam rests and the beam is going to sit on that stud and it'll transfer the load from that beam down to the ground. Our south wall is full of these three inch inlets because everything needs a king stud and I think it's called the jack stud to kind of transfer the loads from windows and doors and things. Lots of lumber. Today, our power tools are powered by the sun.
I want to dry fit everything just to make sure that there's no issues. We made a couple of mathematical errors, so back apart they come, and we're gonna shave an inch and a half off each board. And that's why dry fitting. Now she should be perfect. Third time's a charm. get out of bed today huh? hmm? lumber is cut and screwed and glued for that one right so all we need to do is get the uh, fasteners in what do you say I help you with that one and then we put those both up let's do it that sounds good so some of the lumber that we made is a little fat. This piece looks like it's probably about an inch and five eighths. And so the inlet for this lumber actually looks like it needs to be three and a quarter. And I'll bet it's probably closer to three. So when I put the lumber in here, it's sticking up over the edge of the sip, which we don't want. Time for the hot knife. Very good. Wow, look at that. God dang, really? How's it looking? Pretty close. That's really plumb right there. That's good. We did a little measuring and we did a little tweaking and we're pretty happy where that sip and that sip are. And yeah. we're happy with our rough openings. So now we're gonna switch to building the header. Yeah, which yeah. ties that and that together and still leaves room for a 19 or nine nine foot high garage <sighs> we got a 19 foot high garage no nine 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 i'm gonna help jesse rip down some lvo and then i'm gonna cook us some dinner so that we can keep working
Well guys, it's getting dark. So I've been hammering away the materials for this insulated header and I think it's time to do kind of a dry fit and see if the thickness and everything is going to work out the way we think it will. Warm board. Check. Wait, warm board? What? All right, if my math is correct, two LVLs, one two inch foam, one one inch foam, and one piece of warm board should get us to seven and an eighth inches. Oh no, we're way over. What in the world? Well, gosh darn it, it sure is seven and three quarter. Man, my math today is terrible. Normally, I'm faster than a calculator. Today, I am worthless for math. Two plus two is like 17. Dinner is served. What are we having? Chicken Parmesan for like the 10th time in a row because it's easy, good, and healthy. Wow, check that baby out. Would you like to join me? Yeah, I got it figured out. We're good. Sweet. Hey, what are you doing out here, monkey? Huh? Is he cute? Oh, yeah. He's running around inspecticating again. A little turd. Oh, yeah. He's busy. Are you in there? There you are. I totally knew you were going to come out of that hole. Bugaboo. You're home. Thank you for a yummy dinner. You're welcome. So I think Alyssa is going to bounce and work on some video editing. Does that sound nice? Shower? Yes. And you will join me probably in half an hour? Ish. Something like that. Something like that. I had a lot of aspirations for today, but I feel like it's good for us to go a little bit slower. This is a new phase to the sips. Even though we have a set of plans to work from, it is by no means an Ikea house. There's a lot of kind of looking at how the structure is actually built, comparing it to the plans and seeing what we can work with, what the materials are, and really taking your time to make sure you're making those cuts correctly. Today feels like it went really slow. I know we've been busy all day. We put in over 12 hours today um, between the, the house and other things. So it's been a long day. The heat definitely is affecting us already. Like we whine and snivel about the rain, but the sun definitely has a way of affecting us. But working in the garage was a nice break. So my goal tonight, I'm just gonna try to get this LVL ripped down to the same dimension as the other one. And then we'll pick up where we left off tomorrow. I wanted to push tonight to get this beam up, but it's already dark outside and we have to lift it with the backhoe. So there's no point in pushing that hard. I think we'll get these last few things done here tonight and then we'll start on this beam first thing in the morning and that'll feel really, really good.